In this video, we're going to look at how to apply the four tests to prove two triangles are congruent. If two triangles are congruent, it means that they are exactly identical. This means that they must have corresponding sides the same and the corresponding angles must be equal as well. There are four tests we can use to prove that two triangles are congruent. The first test is called the SSS test. This is when we can show that three pairs of corresponding sides are equal. The second test is the AAS test. This is when we need to show that two angles in the two triangles are the same and one pair of corresponding sides is equal as well. The third test is the SAS test. In this test, we need to show that the two triangles have got two equal corresponding sides and the included angle between the two sides must also be the same. And the last test is the RHS test. In this test, we need to show that both triangles have got a right angle, the hypotenuse of both triangles are the same, and one corresponding side of both triangles are equal. So let's look at how to apply these tests. Our first example, we've got two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle PQR. From the diagram, it's shown that these two triangles have got three pairs of corresponding sides. So it should be obvious that we're going to be using the SSS test. But what we want to do is to learn how to properly construct the proof of congruence. So we're going to begin with the introduction followed by the body, followed by a conclusion, much like an English essay. So for the introduction, you're going to introduce which two triangles we're looking at. In this example, it's triangle ABC and triangle PQR. So we write in triangle ABC and triangle PQR. Now note here that we want to make sure that the order of the vertices correspond to each other. So A corresponds to P, B corresponds to Q, and C corresponds to R. After the introduction, we now need to come up with three reasons to show why they're congruent. The first reason we can write that AB is equal to PQ. We can see that these two sides are the same. They're marked with one dash on the diagram. So the reason will be given since it's marked on the diagram. The second reason is AC is equal to PR. These two sides are the same. They're marked with two dashes on the diagram. So the reason we can simply write given. The third reason is BC is equal to QR. Again, both of these two sides are marked with three dashes on the diagram. So therefore we can write given. So what we have here is we've shown that we have a side equal, another side that's equal and another side. Therefore we can make the conclusion that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR and the test that we're going to be using is the SSS test. Note here that this symbol with three horizontal lines stands for is congruent to. In our second example, we've got two triangles, triangle MNP and triangle TUV. We're going to begin with the introduction. In triangle MNP and triangle TUV. Again, make sure that the order of the vertices correspond to each other. We're going to come up with three reasons. The first reason, we can write that MN is equal to TU. We can see that these two sides are the same and because it's marked, our reason is just given. The second reason, we can also have side MP is equal to TV. These two sides are marked with one dash, so the reason we can use here is given. We can also see that in these two triangles, we have got these two angles that's the same. Even though this angle is marked in the first triangle, nothing is marked in the second triangle. So it's pretty much irrelevant. So we're going to use these two angles as part of our proof. So we write angle PMN is equal to angle VTU and because it's marked, we again write given as our reasoning. So what we have here is we have an S side, another S, another side and an A. But this A is important because this A is the included angle between the two sides. So for our conclusion, we can say that triangle 
MNP is congruent to triangle TUV using the SAS test. Moving on to our third example, we've got triangle PTR and triangle JKL. Starting with the introduction, in triangle PTR and triangle JKL, we can see that side PT is equal to side JK. So that's going to be our first reason. And because it's marked in the diagram, we simply write given. The second reason we can see here is that this angle P and angle J are both the same. They're both equal to 100 degrees. So we can write angle TPR is equal to angle KJL, which is equal to 100 degrees. And because it's marked in the diagram, the reason is simply just given again. For the third one, it's a bit more tricky because in the diagram, 35 degrees and 45 degrees are not the same. However, using the fact that the angle sum of a triangle adds to 180 degrees, we can deduce that this angle, angle T, is going to be 45 degrees. Same reasoning, using angle sum of triangle, this angle L is going to be equal to 35 degrees. So what we can do for the third reason, we can say that Angle PTR is equal to angle JKL, which is 45 degrees. So here are the two angles we're looking at. And for this, the reason will be angle sum of triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So here we've got the S, we have got an A, and we've got another angle that's the same. So we can make the conclusion that Therefore, triangle PTR is congruent to triangle JKL using the AAS test. For our fourth example, we've got two right angle triangles, triangle BCD and triangle EFG. So we begin with in triangle BCD and triangle EFG. Our first reason is that angle BCD is equal to angle EFG, and they're both equal to 90 degrees, right angle. That's going to be our reason. The second thing that we can see from the diagram is that we have got 12 and 12 centimeters, that's the same, and both of these sides are opposite the right angle, so they're the hypotenuses. So we can say that BD is equal to EG, which is equal to 12 centimeters, and that's given because it's marked on the diagram. And we can also see from the diagram that BC and EF are marked to be equal on the diagram. So our third reason is BC is equal to EF. And again, this is given. So for this question, we have got an R for the first part, an H for the second reason, and an S. So therefore, triangle BCD is congruent to triangle EFG using the RHS test. For our last example, I've got another pair of right angle triangles, but I want to work through this example specifically because I want to show you that just because you see a right angle, it doesn't mean that you can conclude using the RHS test straight away. So we're going to begin by saying in triangle BCD and triangle EFG, first we've got angle BCD is equal to angle EFG. Both of these are right angles, so that's going to be our first reason. The second reason we can use is that side BD is equal to side EG. They're marked on the diagram, and in fact, these two sides are the hypotenuse because they're opposite the right angle triangles. So we write BD is equal to EG, which is equal to 12 centimeters, and because it's marked on the diagram, I'm simply going to write given. Now, for the third reason, right, we can't use another side because neither of these sides are marked to be the same and also the angles 30 degrees and 60 degrees are not the same either however we can use the fact that angle sum of a triangle adds to 180 degrees so that this angle b will be equal to 60 degrees and this angle g will be equal to 30 degrees using angle sum of triangle so we can write that angle CBD is equal to angle FEG, which is equal to 60 degrees. And the reason here is because of angle sum of a triangle. So let's look at what we now have. We have got a right angle. 
we have got a hypotenuse, that's true. But here we have got not an S but another angle. So what I'm going to do is the right angle will now convert to an A because a right angle is still an angle. The hypotenuse will convert to an S because hypotenuse is still a side. So we have got A, A, S. So now we're going to conclude that the two triangles, triangle BCD is congruent to triangle EFG. And in this example, it is because of the AAS test. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you guys found this useful. If you want to watch more videos on this topic or other topics, please do visit our channel. We do release videos weekly. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We hope to see you all in the next one. Bye for now.